the Clemson Tigers face off against the Georgia Bulldogs at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. I won't be here for the first half. I'll be working, so that's just fantastic. Uh, as a Clemson alum, I don't love that, but it is what it is at this point. Let's talk about some players who should keep an eye on in this game. First off, before we get to players who could go into the 2022 NFL Draft, I want to talk about some Clemson players that are not draft eligible yet, but are really going to be high risers for the 2023 draft, potentially. Obviously, sophomore quarterback DJ Uyangalele is a huge name out there. People are talking about him potentially being a Heisman candidate, which might not be the best thing right now. Uh, we saw Sam Howell struggle in his first game this year. We saw Spencer Rowler throw an interception early on in his game against Tulane. So maybe being a Heisman candidate as a quarterback this year is not a great thing. But DJ is certainly up there in terms of talent, the quarterbacks, and the Clemson team has now produced Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence. You have to keep an eye on him as a future NFL prospect. Other sophomores to keep an eye on at Clemson, there's three other guys I want to talk about. Wide receiver E.J. Williams, who will certainly step into a larger role if some other guys who are now older on that roster decide to go in the NFL draft this coming season, which we expect. And Brian Brzee and Malice Murphy on the defensive line. Brzee's a defensive tackle. Murphy's an edge. These guys have all-American potential and could possibly be the top defensive tackle and top defensive end in college football next year. But stepping into the guys who are actually draft eligible for 2022, a redshirt junior left tackle with Jordan McFadden. There's some things to like about his game. He was really good in the limited sample size in 2019. Not great this past year, but still solid. Uh, if you project for development, could get there into maybe being a third round pick, perhaps. I think he could still sneak into day two, but the expectations have certainly gone down for him uh, after, well, after last season. Junior wide receiver Justin Ross had first round potential at one point in his career. He was a phenomenal as a rookie, had a little bit of a down year in his sophomore season, but was still a tremendous player. And then he had to miss all last season. He had surgery done for a congenital issue. I think it was a, some kind of fusion in his neck that he had to have surgery for. So he missed the entire season. His draft status is really going to be impacted by how quick he can get out of the gate here, how long it takes for him to get adjusted back to playing college football games every week or so. He is a, he's a tremendous talent. He's first-round talent. We just have to see if he's able to get back into that stride right away or it takes a couple of games for him to get back into that position where he's able to perform at a high level and put up that first round level talent and put up that tremendous production. If it takes a couple of games for him to get going, we could be looking at a guy who falls into round two or round three. Other wide receivers to keep an eye on. Junior wide receiver Joseph Legata has been dealing with a hamstring injury, but I think he's good to play against Georgia today. Junior wide receiver Frank Lawson Jr. Both these guys are pretty tall, pretty good contested catch wide receivers. They are just... Clemson brand. I mean, them, Justin, uh, Justin Ross, they're Clemson brand wide receivers. They're tall. They're 6'2 or taller. Uh, they're 2'10 to 2'15 pounds. They run well. <laughs> There's just a lot to like about these guys. And they're all coming out of similar mold to some extent. Uh, Nagata might be a little bit more impressive than Frank Ladson, but Ladson's certainly more available, more healthy. So we'll see how this plays out. But these three wide receivers are all going to get looks for the 2022 NFL Draft. Still a senior tight end, Braden Galloway. Uh, it just has not been featured a lot in Clemson's offense over the past couple of years. There certainly seemed like there was a lot of potential for him going back maybe two years ago, but they just never had that feature role in the offense that put him over the top. Junior right guard Will Putnam is someone to look keep an eye on. He had an all-ACC selection either in this preseason or last year, so that's someone you might want to keep an eye on. I don't know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean he's NFL talent, but it means he's one of the best players in the ACC, so just maybe take a peek on him. There's not a lot to love about this Clemson offensive line this year. It has not really gotten better from last year. It might have actually gotten worse. But him and McFadden are probably the two best linemen we got so well. We got right now. Moving to the defensive side of the ball. Junior defense tackle Tyler Davis, who might not be available for today's game because I think COVID concerns potentially might come into play there. Missed a lot last year, but was phenomenal as a freshman. There's thoughts of him being maybe a top five interior defensive lineman in this class because, again, it's not a great defensive line class. But Tyler Davis, good against stopping the run and gets enough of a pass rush to be be a weapon for this defense. Now, is he the best defensive lineman on this unit anymore? No, he's probably third behind Brzee and Murphy, but still a very good defensive lineman who will be probably a third-round pick or higher. Then we go to two edge rushers I want to talk about. Senior edge rusher Xavier Thomas. Obviously, so much potential going into Clemson when he was a freshman. Expectations were sky high. It just has not met them. This past year, dealt with covid and his trapped throat, so he's never really healthy to play. Come back, one last shot. All, still all the potential in the world, all the phenomenal athletic ability. Just has to put together and have one really productive season here. He's got the 
players around him, pieces around him on defense line to do it this year. It's just a question not where he can just actually put everything together. Even if he doesn't, there's still a chance to get drafted just based on his physical traits. And the last guy I want to talk about, not nearly as physically gifted, but still a very talented uh, defensive end, senior edge rusher Justin Foster. This guy actually retired from college football for briefly and decided to come back, uh, citing issues with COVID-19 and with asthma, but he decided to come back, play it out again. He's a very good defensive end, very underrated defensive end who gets lost in the Clemson rotation. But it would have been huge if he had not come back for the Tigers because we needed to have that depth. He is still a very good player. He could start on most teams in the ACC. He just is on a very deep team in Clemson right now. But again, a very good edge rusher that could probably be a day three selection. Then cornerback Andrew Booth, he's a junior. People loved what they saw in a small sample size last year. He only had about 400 snaps though, 300 to 400 snaps. So we have not seen a ton of him so far. But based on what we saw, he was phenomenal. This guy has the potential to be a top 10, if not top 15 pick. But again, limited sample size could go out this year and just struggle and fall into eventually third, fourth round. Or, like I said, could rise, be top 15, top 10 pick. In our corner, that's on someone's people's minds. Junior Sheridan Jones. Jones, I don't really know his role is going to be this year. Might play in the slot. Uh, he's a good player, which has not left as much of a positive impression as Andrew Bush, certainly, at this point. And again, Jones just putting up reps at this point. Putting up solid reps will really help him out. Would he get drafted if he went out today? I really don't know. I really don't know where he would go. I think he'd be drafted, but probably in round six, seven, maybe late round five. Not a highly picked player. But that course should turn around if he has a very good season. And to Georgia, uh, it, all, it obviously all starts with redshirt junior quarterback JT Daniels. He's transferred from USC. Uh, played his first couple of games with Georgia last year. There's some people who think he's a Heisman candidate. There's some people who think he's a first round pick. I'm not really in on either of those, to be honest, but there are certainly some people who have much higher opinions of him than others. He's a very controversial quarterback. Wide receivers George Pickens and Dominic Blaylock, neither of them are going to play uh, today because they're both injured. I think Blaylock actually might only be a sophomore. Maybe he's a repeat sophomore, so maybe it is his third year in college football. Uh, Pickens is the guy who could be a first-round pick at wide receiver, but again, he's injured, coming off a significant injury. Him and Blaylock both, so they're not going to play today. Junior running back Zamira White. This is a very interesting running back class. He's probably in that tier two range behind uh, Brees Hall, behind Isaiah Spiller. The guys I've talked about in my previous video when I covered the Miami draft prospect and talked about Cameron uh, Thomas a little bit. But Zamira White is a productive player. Georgia always has these great running backs. You know that. Georgia's always going to put uh, good running backs into the draft. Zamira White's the guy to keep an eye on this year. And then senior left tackle Jamari Slayer. Uh, oh, Jamari Sailor. Excuse me. Jamari Sal, I'm messing this name up pretty terribly. <laughs> Jamari Salyer, excuse me. I think I got it right that time. Uh, I get myself tongue-tied a little bit. But again, normal those left tackle guys have kind of in a similar range to Jordan McFadden where is he going to be a tackle in the NFL? Is he going to be a guard? Is he going to go late day two? Is he going to be definitely day three? It's just very hard to tell us some of these tackles right now in college football because we don't really know if they're going to be good enough to stick at that positioning in the NFL or even if they're going to hold up to be solid picks at this point. But this is a guy still to keep your eye on going into the game because he has to work against a very solid edge rush for Clemson. And speaking of the edge rush, there are three really good players that can get the quarterback on Alabama. Senior edge rusher Adam Anderson, senior or junior defensive end Trayvon Walker, and then junior edge slash linebacker Nolan Smith. These guys can all get off the quarterback at a high level. Adam Anderson is some people's views of being a top 20 player in this coming year's draft and certainly a top five edge rusher in a lot of people's minds uh Trayvon Walker is an underrated player who really has not gotten enough attention this year because he's playing with Adam Anderson and Nolan Smith and Nolan Smith is a little bit of a more undersized edge rusher but again you can get use that guy like a rush linebacker or something like that there's a lot of ways you can incorporate a player like that into your defense he's going to be another pass rusher that comes has to deal with this that deal with today and with that average to slightly below average offensive line for Clemson could be a big deal big ask for them to put up with these three edge rushers. And not the only guys on the defensive line that could really cause problems for Clemson. Nose tackle, Jordan Davis, he's a senior. One of the top five interior defensive linemen in this year's, or this year's coming draft class. A lot different than guys like Tyler Davis. Not going to get nearly as much of a push in the pass rush, but it's just going to eat up a ton of space and be a really good run stopper. Junior linebacker, N'Kobe Dean. This is arguably the best linebacker in this year's draft class. He's certainly going to be in the top five discussion moving forward. People will love him. And I think PFF is a huge supporter of him as well. So, Nicobe Dean's going to be great for them. He's a junior linebacker. 
And again, that would be huge at the second level of that defense today. Because we know the front is going to work phenomenal for Georgia. The second level of the defense is going to be one to keep an eye on. So is the third level, which is going to have Darion Kendrick. Obviously, the story there. Former Clemson cornerback. Could have been a second-round pick last year. Maybe even a late first-round pick, but got torched by Ohio State in the college football playoffs. And then was unceremoniously kind of told, you know, things aren't working out here. There were some off-the-field concerns. There were some maturity concerns. And it led to him ultimately transferring to Georgia. And he's a senior cornerback since so his last year. And he's looking to make an impact. Obviously, stepping into a role that had a couple guys get drafted out of last year. Tyson Campbell is one of them. Eric Stokes being the other. And they have two good safeties. Junior safety, Tyke Smith, who's injured right now. who's a West Virginia transfer. This is going to be his first year at Georgia. But he's injured. He's not going to play today, from my understanding. And then junior safety, Lewis. Oh, that's another tough last name. Lewis Sinne? Lewis Sin? I'm not actually sure how to say that last name. I should have looked that one up for sure. But he's another good player who's so far who's made a big impact over the past two years. Really saw a lot more snaps this past season. But again, Tyke Smith is probably the one that everyone wants to keep their eye on. Lewis is kind of sliding under the radar, radar so far, but I've heard good things about him as well. So both these teams, incredibly talented. This is going to be an epic matchup. I'm going to miss the first half, and I'm not. I'm just not okay with it. But anyways, I'm going to record it. Hopefully nothing happens important in the first half and get back. The second half will be hopefully where everything goes down. Looking forward to this big game. Quick reminder, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. Do not miss it.